So here on the recipe tab of the product card, there are a couple of things that I need to bring out from a business perspective um, to approach how you deal with recipes differently. And that is dependent upon your business model. Um, there are two types of manufacturing processes. You have uh, process manufacturing, which deals with um, products that are coming out in uh, volumetric units of measure or weight-based units of measure. And then you have discrete processes, which are coming out in uh, unit-based manufacturing. Now, for the case that, we've ha that we have here, which is a dining table, it falls more in the category of discrete manufacturing because we're dealing with absolute values. Um, but when it comes to process manufacturing, uh, inputting a recipe or bill of materials is a completely different process. Generally speaking, uh, when we're dealing with process manufacturing, we're usually a business that will have a dedicated formula for your recipe or bill of material input. An example of this might be very simple, simple way of putting it would be something like the paint. So in, when you're making paint, you probably make a batch of paint um, in, its, in its most basic form. And that batch of paint could be 100 gallons at a time. So you might actually have a recipe that's based on a 100 gallon batch. But in Katana, the difference with uh, the recipe and bill of material inputs is we do it on a per unit of measure basis. This means that if you create a unit of measure um, that is a batch size of let's say 100 gallons, then your unit of measure should actually be gallons. And whenever you're inputting the data for that, if you have a formula for the making 100 gallons of paint, for example, then what you need to do is divide every ingredient by 100 in order to get the correct amount to put an output of one gallon. So this is something you have to think about in terms of structure when you're inputting recipes into your Katana account, depending on the business you are operating in. Now, with discrete manufacturing, it's pretty simple because it's absolute values. It's one piece takes X amount of this or that, and it's very straightforward. It's much more simplified uh, manufacturing process from that perspective. So um, for the case of this video and this tutorial, I, uh, I, I will use the discrete model since that's what we have as an example. But in batch-based manufacturing or in process manufacturing, what I would recommend is uh, simply create, take the formula you have for the recipes you make, divide it by the batch size for each ingredient when you're adding your material and components to the ingredients list for the various variant products you make. And when you're doing that, you might come across the problem where you look at this and say, does it support decimals? And the answer is yes. Katana supports decimals up to five decimal points past zero. So in terms of accuracy, it's really, really solid and it works great. And it also costs all of that out for you in a very nice and easy, understandable way. The next element that um, I could recommend looking at as well and to be mindful of is that in the event that you are using, let's say, imperial system where you might have uh, fractions, which of course don't have any running uh, decimal places, you might use like one third, which would translate to decimal place of 0 0.3333, then this is another area that uh, we don't presently support in Katana. So if you have measurements like that, do be mindful of this. And um, my recommendation would be to create uh, either create units of measure that would counteract that or uh, do some rounding within your um, recipe calculations if it can work or it's applicable within the margin of error for the products you make. So without further ado, I'll get into the detailed specifics, but please do keep those in mind as you're thinking about how you want to structure your data for your recipes when you bring them into your Katana account. Now, first up, uh, ingredients. So on this ingredients list, this is where you add any material that applies 
to any variant product that exists within this part of the tab on your Katana product card. Once we get to the recipe here, um, the way it works is we use something called variant specific recipes. This means that you would add an ingredient and in that ingredient, you would map it to the corresponding uh, product variant that it would apply to. Now, in simple terms, this means uh, very specifically, I have four, four tables that I make here that come in four different colors. Every single table I manufacture is made from wood. So when I'm making these tables, which all have the same design, um, I'll use 15 meters of wood and which particular color variant product does it apply to? It applies to all of them. So what, what I've done here is I've mapped all of the product variants to one ingredient. So anytime a manufacturing order is going to be created for any of those four variants, then the wood ingredient product will always appear in the ingredients list of the manufacturing order. And it will always give a quantity of 15 meters. Now, the four other types here, which are paints, the painting of those tables corresponds to the end product variant. So for example, the painting process, after I make it out of wood, I'm going to put a certain color of paint on it. So what I need to do is I need to take my paint material and map it to the correct color of the product variant too. So I'm going to map my cognac colored paint which I'm going to use four liters of directly to my cognac table. So anytime I'm making a cognac dining table, then the uh, material cognac paint will be applied to it in its ingredients list on the manufacturing order for four liters, but it won't do it for the other three. So in certain cases, um, the, the amount of flexibility you have here is, uh, is, is quite, quite broad. When you start making modifications to your product portfolio, meaning that maybe you offer more options, um, you can also use utilize that flexibility directly in uh, in this in this space as well. For example, general information: I decide that I'm going to introduce a new type of um, product to this family of dining tables by introducing a new size. So let's say I come in here and I go to my product variant configuration and I add a new size table and I include a small one and a big one. Oh, sorry, I spelled that wrong. We'll do this again. Excellent. Okay, and so I'll update the configuration. Let's assume that all of the tables I make already are considered big to begin with. And then I'm introducing a new table, which is a small table. So I'll update the configuration just like so. And it will add the new uh, configurator option here um, in this column. So I'll go in there and I'll specify that all of the pre-existing tables fall within the large size table. And then let's say I add a brown one that is a small table. I'll give it a variant code of DTS-BR for like dining table small brown. And maybe this one will cost me $800, $800 uh, a little cheaper than the big ones. So now what's going on here is you don't see any ingredients cost associated with it because I haven't built the recipe for it. But um, when I go into the product recipe uh, bomb tab, then you can see I need to start mapping all of these up correctly to the different size product tables we have since I just added as a configuration. So assuming that everything was made previously for big tables, um, I'll map that this applies, this 15 meters of wood applies to the big table. This uh, four liters of cognac applies to the big table. This one also applies to the big table and so on and so forth. So you might be asking, all right, I just added a new table to my lineup of products. It's a different size. So that means it uses a different quantity of wood. And if you're asking that question, then the answer is absolutely yes, you're absolutely right. Um, so this is where you can add the additional materials and then differentiate how they are applied. 
So for example, if we are needing to use wood, we'll add wood a second time into this list. And the difference will be, we might use 10 meters of it, but we use 10 meters of wood for all colors because you make the table first prior to painting it. So you make it from wood. And then you specify that that amount of wood is used for the small table only. If you need to organize this list of information, you can drag that ingredient higher on this ingredients list right here. So that way the two woods that are coming in different quantities, which are applied to different size products are um, bundled together just for easier understanding. Um, inside of your recipes, the, they can be um, also done where it's repeated like we have done here as well. I haven't done it already yet, but let's go ahead and add the paint that's brown directly to this small table. It might use two liters of paint and we'll apply it to the brown table in the small size. And then these two are combined together. And over here, you could see the cost associated with them. All right, so a couple of things more to go over on the recipe uh, tab, because there's a lot of information here, is, um, is the notes section. So the notes section here is, is really quite a powerful tool, but you don't notice it like directly jumping out in front of you. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is because uh, there's a couple of things that this notes section can do. If, for example, you're on the pro package and uh, the pro package is where you have the shop floor app and you have actual operators on the floor level using Katana, you can add text into this, into this uh, specific ingredients notes section. And what it will do is whenever the manufacturing order is made, that text will always be visible whenever that specific item is called up for that manufacturing order. And it appears in the manufacturing order as text. You can leave little tips and tricks there like, oh, shake the paint up before you uh, use it um, just to make sure that people are using the product or materials correctly whenever they're doing the operations. In addition to that, you can do um, other things like this text field can um, be updated on the individual manufacturing order in order to provide live uh, information specific to a manufacturing order directly to your floor personnel. So it's handy from that perspective as well because it provides some two-way communication um, from the back office to the floor level and also even in the floor app, we do have a notes section where you can update information, which comes back up to the um, to the team that's looking in the back office here here on Katana. Now, if you're using recipes and you know they're getting very big, um, and maybe you've got just hundreds and hundreds of lines of data here, um, there are some things that you do need to keep in mind that it's probably a limitation is not to exceed five or 600 lines of recipe rows for a single product card. Um, there might be some limitations in terms of like slowness in the application. So in certain cases, uh, like we just did here, um, if I made tables that came in 500 colors, it might get really messy on this recipe list. So if I'm going to add a new size of tables to my product portfolio, what I might wanna do is just create an entirely new product card and then create the recipe on that entirely new product card. So I don't have a high convoluted list of ingredients that are applied to all of my variants. So what I would recommend is to think about, you know, how much variation do you have in your products and how many materials are going into those different variations in different quantities and different uh, unique relationships. And if it's exceeding five or 600 rows of recipe data, because you have to build out very complicated relationships, then it's probably better to think about restructuring your um, recipes, or sorry, restructuring your products to um, have separate product cards for maybe slightly different um, families of variants. So you might, in this case, break them down by having a single product card for all your big tables and a single product card for all of your small tables. 
You can also indeed use the filters up here. So if I want to like look at all of the ingredients that are applied strictly to my big tables, I can shortlist them here. Um, I can also like shortlist any of my notes if I just need to see something uh, at quick glance. Lastly, when it comes to creating recipes, there's a lot of ways to do it. And this video is full of tips and tricks, so I hope it's helpful. Uh, but a couple of things to keep an eye out for is yes, you can manually add them by the row. Pretty straightforward, really great when you're starting to use the product more and just kind of get the hang of things. But if you've got a lot of products in your portfolio that are, how do you say, used across all of your, if you have a lot of products that are similar, you can actually copy existing recipes over from ones that you've already programmed. And if you need to kind of do some quick adding, very easy way to do it, just copy the recipe over from another product onto a new product card and you're good to go. Most of the work is done for you. You probably just have to go in there and rebuild the associations and change the, change the uh, quantities, but you don't have to do a whole lot of manual adding. The most um, efficient way to import, uh, to sorry, to create recipes is to import them through a spreadsheet. And we will cover this topic when we get into the real nitty gritty of actually getting your data into Katana. But this is one of the elements where I'm going to repeat again how important SKUs are, is you cannot import recipes and bombs into Katana without having an SKU association to every ingredient and every finished good. If you don't do that, then you will run across the problem that you won't be able to import them. So highly, highly recommend that when you start adding mat materials and products to always have a unique SKU and always make sure it's unique. If it's not unique, then we can't map the relationship between the products and the materials. And last but not least, there's also a way to import them through our API. So if you have maybe a very complicated manufacturing business, where you determine the bill of materials, maybe through some sort of engineering process, maybe you're using CAD or something along those lines, then you could import your recipes as well through our API, which is available on our API uh, docs page. So that should be more or less summing up our recipe tab in the products card. It is a very big video. I apologize for that, but um, it is the most important element of your uh, manufacturing system because once you get your recipes in then you have the ability to actually start tracking your raw material inventory and making manufacturing orders so it is the key element to getting started so i hope that helps um, after this we'll go ahead and move into the production operations section and carry on from there